Hello lovely artist. I've just finished making some projects with my February art pack download that I make for my art club members but I still have a project in me so I thought I would share it with you here on YouTube. It's been a long time since I posted you a full video, a video project here on YouTube and I, I will tell you a little bit more about that later but just for now I wanted to get you started on this project and show you how I kicked it off. So I've already cut out all of the elements from this month's download. I've been playing around with them for a couple of projects. If you're interested, you can get this download. You can print it off yourself by joining my art club that I host over on Patreon. And I'll leave a link, of course. There's loads of projects, lots of processes, tutorials, and all sorts of things that will help you with your art. And when I put these packs together every month, I tend to have a play myself and then post a video of what I made out of it just to give some inspiration as well or just as a way of arting along with you. Now this month when I put this pack together the colours actually quite surprised me because these would not be the normal kind of colours that I would pick to do a project in but when I put them all together in the pack from other artwork that I'd done here and there they just seemed to go really well and I really love the reds, yellows and greens together. So for this project I really wanted to use one of the hairs from the pack. There are two in the pack. One's a little bit smaller than the other, so it's kind of perfect for an A4, A5 size, like this junk journal that I'm working in. And then there's a larger one, which is a good size for A4, which is around a letter size. When I started playing, I was convinced I was going to be using this page from my junk journal, and I was just playing around with the elements, but the more I played around, the less convinced I became. So I started looking around for some other backgrounds that I could collage onto that would go with what I was sort of thinking for this particular project and I always have a range of junk journals on the go and you know several pages in them are at various levels of completeness so it doesn't take too much to search through my current junk journals and find a page that I really thought would suit and it worked really well because what I finally came down to was in fact the page that inspired one of the backgrounds from the pack Maybe that's what brought me to using this page. Now when it comes to hairs, I always seem to see them in fields. And so I decided that I wanted to build a scene. And I think I can use this texture that I have in this background to, to fill out a little grassy area for the hair to sit on. So that she's not floating randomly on the page, something to ground her. As I'm setting a scene for this collage, it's going to require a little bit of fiddling about. I'm trying not to overthink it. I always try not to overthink it, but I do want to have my placement in the places that I'm happy, just get the elements where I want them to be so that I can convey the kind of feeling that I want from this piece. Once I'm happy, I then try to leave them in place and get them stuck down so that I don't come to them and try and overfuss them and move them around. So, for this piece, have you actually spotted there's some hidden symbolism in this piece? I don't really know where this connection comes from for me, but often when I think of hairs, I will also think of the moon too. I think it's one of those sort of folk story style images that just gets locked in your mind. And I know it's a little bit obvious to pair hairs with moons or even like walls with moons and things like that. But I don't know, maybe I have to work it out of my system. For this piece, what I've actually done is I've just inferred a moon with a little bit of a negative shape cut out. And it's a similar color to the background. So you'd be forgiven to miss it completely. But I know it's there, and now that I've pointed it out to you, you know it's there too. And it's a full moon, but only suggested by that ring of paper collage that I've put there, which came from a leftover of cutting a circle to a smaller size. And I just kept the negative shape too, and this is what happens when you keep all of your cutout shapes, whatever they are.
So I did arm and arm a little bit about the positioning of the leaves, whether to go full meadow or maybe a little bit more abstract and have the leaves coming in from different directions, perhaps as if it was being, the hair was being glimpsed through an opening in a hedge maybe. And that's actually what I went for, the, the imagery of a hair being seen through a hedgerow. Sometimes when you have certain imagery ingrained within you, you do need to just work it out of you, don't you? Work out the obvious to get to, to another place where maybe it will be less obvious, or maybe there will be more connections and different connections and deeper connections. And if you've seen any of my other hairs over the years, because it is a theme I keep coming back to, like the one I did for a kaleidoscope course last year. So I was part of the kaleidoscope course 2021 and my bonus project using the, the colours that I find the hardest to work with. Well, I did a hair for that whole class, actually. I ended up doing three different types of hairs, but the hair that I did for the bonus project was also a hedgerow hair. So, yeah, this theme, it comes up a lot for me. <laughs> super easy cheat here well not a cheat this is a tool a tool to help you with your art if you happen to have a printer or a scanner at hand then and you and you've got to that point where you're thinking of putting something on there but you're not entirely committed to the idea take a copy of your page and you can try it on the copy instead so you'll see lines on my printed copy because my printer is rather old and exhausted <laughs> but I want to get the most out of it before I have to replace it. I mean these things they shouldn't be disposable should they? You should be able to fix them and get them working. Anyway that doesn't seem to be where we are but anyway let's move on. <laughs> now for this I'm going to turn to my ink tense pencils and I want to match the colour that I'm going to pick with the original piece of artwork not the copy just in case there's a slight difference there in the colours I'm going to be working on the original so the colours need to match that. I pick myself out a few pencils to have a go with and see how the idea is going to work first. Often when I'm using collage when I'm using these elements from my kit in collage I will cut around them because sometimes I'm undecided whether to use them with the border or to use them you know fussy cut and it's easier to just do a quick cut around them leaving the border in place and then I might remove that border later or I might work it out with some paint or exactly do what I'm doing here because when I first put this image on this page I was going with the white border I liked the way it popped the image off the page and then something happened and I've changed my mind <laughs> and unfortunately I'd stuck it all down so <laughs> I couldn't go and fussy cut around the, the hair so this is the next best thing As I'm working on the original I am taking a bit more care with how I do this than I did on the test copy on one hand I'm filling in that extra white border that I have there but I don't want to be too heavy and turn it into a border of its own type I don't think the hair needs an outline another thing I can do is add in some more details and bring out some of the details in the pattern and I really like how that pattern in the hair is mirrored in the grassy patch that I made the pattern on the background So if you've been wondering where I've been, I've still been arting and I've still been sharing, just not here on YouTube quite as much as before. So you can still find loads and loads of videos and art in my art club over on Patreon and sharing finished projects over on Instagram. You can even find me in my weekly free newsletter too, which yeah, shout out, you should go and join that up because there's a free workshop and a free ebook there. So lots of things to get you creating. But I stopped posting regularly on YouTube for what I thought would be a few weeks and it in fact turned out to be quite a few months. <laughs> if I'm honest, making videos takes me a long, long time and I was making at least eight videos a month. The schedule just became far too overwhelming and a few things were happening as well that, that are just the fallout of being an online sharer, but it all added to the overwhelm. 
And when I cut out the weekly YouTube videos, I'd put in that schedule because I wanted to make it something that would be a regular thing. And it was really hard to make the decision to step back from that. But when I did, I started to find that my schedule just calmed down a bit. I was able to step away from constantly firefighting. It's taken me a little bit of time to get to that point. And then it's taken me even longer after that to get to a point where I was happy to come back to YouTube and start posting again. So what I'm thinking is remove the border from the hair, but I'm going to keep the white border with the leaves. I'm just going to add some pencil line and, and make it all part of the, the final piece. So the white is going to add its own little texture. Now I use ink tense pencils a lot. They've become something that I go back to again and again in my artwork. I really love using them. And I've noticed over time that they're not good at holding a really sharp point. They can be a little bit on the soft side. And sometimes when that point snaps off on your work, it's, it will leave a little trace. And if you don't want that trace, I found that after sharpening the tip, if you just snap it off a little bit with your finger, so just press it lightly into your finger or maybe onto a surface, but very lightly, and the sharpest bit will just snap off. So you'll control then, it won't snap off on your piece and leave that mark. Then again, if you like that mark, then don't worry about it. I'm in the mood to put some more leaves down here and I really like the contrast between the, the collage leafy elements and then some drawn leaf elements too. Now the minimalist in me likes where we're at at this point, but there's also this small voice wondering if I should perhaps sort of put in some more detail here and I'm, I'm juggling between those two things, but this is my junk journal and my junk journal is a place to play, experiment and push. And sometimes when you've got that little voice in your head that says, well, what would happen if you should just follow it, you should just follow it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It is just a place to play and to find out. So one of the things that attracted me to this page in the first place was the bleed through pattern from the coloured fine line marker flower on the other side. Did you spot that when I was trimming off the overhangs? I really love how that adds a little bit of texture on this page. So I thought I would bring that out a bit more and, and make that a feature here. Adding that border with a colour that is also here on this page and through the bleed through of the pen as well. So that lovely sort of dark maroony red. I picked that as the kind of colour that I wanted to bring out this pattern. And I think it really works. I think it actually brings what would have disappeared on the page out a little bit more prominently. To balance that detail on the page, I added in some more doodles with the same pencil color in the opposite corner. And I think that works really well with the other marker bleed through color here and the pattern, of course, brings it all together. Now, one of the habits that I've been getting into recently is dating my work. I hop around so many notebooks and journals that sometimes it's hard for me to see the progression of my art through a timeline. I mostly use the dates of the photographs I take when I share the pieces, but now I've been dating my pieces more regularly so that I can see it. It's a lot easier to, to see what I've been doing and what direction my art has been going. Is that something you do? Let me know if you date your work as well. 
Another thing I'm doing is also trying to keep note of the pencil colours that I'm using as well so that I can list them in the description for you along with a link to my mailing list and my art club. So yeah, go have a look in my description. And if you want to pick up this download to play with too, then go join my art club. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today and hopefully arting along with me too. I'm really grateful that you're here and yeah, I hope you have a lovely arty session. I'll see you later, hopefully not too long from now. <laughs> Bye.